Would you believe me if I told you that farmers have one of the highest rates of suicide? Yeah, most wouldn't believe me and would actually argue the point, but we're five times that of the national average and we're double that of the veterans. People ask, how is that possible? What do farmers do that could be that stressful that it would push them to the point of suicide? Well, that's because they have no idea what farmers actually do and what they deal with. All they care about is at the end of the day, they go to the grocery store and that the produce is there and that it looks good. They have no idea where it comes from or how much work is involved. It's the same with any other commodity. They just want to be able to have it available and fast and affordable. They don't care where the cost is coming from on the farmer's end. Would you believe that farmers only make 15 cents on every dollar that's spent? And the average farmer only makes $10,000 a year. How are you supposed to survive on $10,000 a year? But they do it. In a lot of cases, when it's a small far family farm, one of the significant others has to work off the farm in order to try to pay the regular bills for the household. Farmers are considered self-employed. Well, self-employment can seem like a great idea until you realize you get no paid vacation and no sick da days. And farming is a very strenuous and physically demanding job. And should you get hurt, you have nobody to take your place. So what happens to the farm? Well, buying insurance is next to impossible because the cost of insurance is so high and you don't make enough to really buy a decent insurance plan and we make just enough that you can't get any kind of state, state subsidies and help with your insurance. You work before the sun comes up and you don't get home till late after the sun goes down and you do this day after day. Most often we do 80 hour weeks, that's an average. Farming is considered an incredibly high-risk business. When you consider all the factors that play that we have no control over, such as the weather, the cost of inputs, the prices that we get paid, the government regulations that keep changing, well, we have to deal with all of those and just try to make the best of it. When it comes to the weather, if you have a year that has excessive rain, you, if you get to plant at all, you're planting late or you lose your crop to flooding. If you have a year that's really dry in a drought you're, and you don't have any kind of irrigation, your crops will die. One of the realities is if you have two bad years of farming, you could be faced with bankruptcy or foreclosure in just two years. Let me give you kind of an example of what can happen on an average year as a farmer. So you start your harvest in March you start getting the ground ready, you want to get planting. Well, you haven't had any money coming in since last November. You harvest your crops from August to November, and if you're having a bad year, well, at the end of the season, the only thing you can pay are the bills that you can pay. And what's left of the bills, they have to wait until the end of the next year's harvest. Well, your phone starts to ring. It's not ringing because someone's calling to check in on you. The reason that it's ringing is someone's calling because you owe the money, whether it be for land rent or equipment leasing or just your regular bills. And the debt collectors don't care that you had a bad farm year. They want their money and they're going to call and they're going to call and they're going to call over and over and over again. Well, can you imagine the stress and pressure of knowing you have these obligations that you can't take care of? I mean, a lot of the times we grow food for others to eat, but yet we can't go to the grocery store to buy the food that we need for ourselves. And for the few farmers that are lucky enough, they go to a bank and they get a credit limit or credit line. Well, if you're lucky enough to get a credit line, that comes with variable interest rates. And also, that's due to be paid at the end of your season. It's not like you have several years to pay that off. That has to be paid in one year. Well, if you're lucky enough or unlucky enough to get the credit line, that can help you to get through the season. But if you don't, you beg, steal, borrow, scratch to get whatever money you can to pay for the fertilizer and seed, which means you can't buy anything else in order to get through the next season and just hope that this year's a better year. Farmers by nature are very proud and stubborn and strong and have an incredible work ethic. Well, being a proud farmer means that you don't want to have to ask for help. And when you're faced with a really difficult year, can you imagine how difficult that would be? 
the other reality, I think it's 88% of all farmers fear the loss of their farm and that loss affects their mental health. I mean, you lose your farm to foreclosure. It's a pride thing too, but you've also lost maybe potentially a farm that's been in your family for six generations. They, they can't deal with this stress. One of the other things that farmers face is isolation. I mean, you live in rural areas and you, you're closest neighbor could be miles and miles away and really do you want to tell them how badly you're doing I mean if they don't already know that's a big hit to your pride so a lot of farmers feel isolated and they're not going to want to talk about it they're going to want to talk to you they're not going to want to talk to their wives they're proud and strong and they want everyone to think everything is okay so they take everything internally 70 percent of all farmers asked about their mental health said that because they're embarrassed they wouldn't seek help. 87% said they wouldn't get help because of the cost of treatment. That's pretty sad. Yes, there are some government subsidies out there, but really at the end of the day, say $84 billion is supposed to go to farm aid, but the reality is is that less than 10% of that actually goes to the farmer. The rest of that goes to other programs goes to other programs such as food stamps. So very little goes back to the farmer. And Farm Aid, when you contact them for help, the only funding they have to give you is $500. Well, that $500 can pay that electric bill for that month, so it's always greatly appreciated or put food on your table for that month. But when you're looking at the amount of debt and financial obligation, it's just a big drop, one drop of water in a big barrel. One of the things I want you to think about is that even in the face of all the stress and worry and depression that go along with farming, these farmers keep doing it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, because it's all they know and then they love what they do. So even at the risk of themselves, they'll keep doing it and they'll keep moving on and they'll keep plugging along, even if it kills them at the end.